Let's turn the unit on and let it cycle round to the familiar grade and time display. And we have our sensor here. Now, in order for the sensor to work, the enlarger needs to be on. So we press the focus button, which turns the enlarger on, and then we take an exposure reading. Well, at the moment the lights are on, and if I just press the metering button, it's going to say that the reading's too high and uh, not do anything with it. So what I need to do is fool the meter at the moment into making a reasonable exposure. And I'm going to do that by moving it across and covering it with my hand and pressing the button. Whilst it does that, it says the word busy. Whilst it waits for the light level to settle, I'm moving my hand around a bit at the moment. And the display goes through a number of different stages. Briefly, it had the letter D and then 000, which means that that's a density of zero because it's just the first reading. And then it lights up uh, a light on the grayscale at this far end and then says grade two, 3.46 seconds. If I wanted to make this exposure at a different grade other than grade two, if I alter the grade setting by moving down a grade to grade zero, it now has worked out that the exposure for that same point and for that point being that kind of uh, tone of white or off-white, it would be 3.68 seconds. So it, it's intelligent and knows what it needs to do in order to get to the right exposure to give a consistent appearance on the grayscale. Now, that might not be uh, an off-white reading. That might be, um, uh, might be a grey card. And if it was a grey card, you'd expect the tone to be around here somewhere. Well, if you increase the time, a display showing C for compensation and then the number of steps moves that light all the way up to the far end. We've obviously gone too far. So coming back, we've come to a darkish grey at 15 seconds. And if I make an exposure now, that will give me a 15 second exposure and it will yield the point that I measured at that grey. And that's why the analyzer is quite intelligent. Now what I'm going to do would be to turn the enlarger off by pressing the focus button and then pressing the print button. Now when we set up the user mode, we set the beep on and you can hear the ticks as it counts down. And when it gets to the end, it gives a double tick just to remind you. So that's the most basic of exposures based on a single reading. And that's fine if you know what you're doing and you know what contrast setting to take. But sometimes you don't and you want more information from the negative. So without doing anything more, we can take a second reading. I'm going to cover up the unit a bit more, turn the focusing light back on again and press a second reading. Again, it will show busy and it showed briefly D 0.87. So the density of this second reading, of the negative of this second reading was 0.87 units darker than the, um, the previous reading. Okay, and it also has done something strange. It's now blinking a light at the top here and this has got a very, very long time. Now, let's just say that those two readings were of the highlight and shadow of a picture. So uh, a dark tree trunk in shadow where you can just about see the bark and a fluffy white cloud where you just want to see the fluffiness. So obviously this exposure is wrong and this one is wrong. The blinking end refers to the fact that we're off the scale. So it's darker than dark gray. So let's first of all reduce the exposure. And we can reduce the exposure and we can see that this light has traveled down to here and this one stopped blinking and has moved down to there. So at the moment, at grade two, what I'll achieve is a pale gray and a darkish gray for that particular set of, or set of pair of readings. Now, the question is, if I want to make that whiter and darker, I would obviously want to increase contrast. So I can now use the contrast buttons to say, let's see what it would look like at grade three. So I'm going to go two and a half, grade three, and it's kept this one the same and has moved this one off the scale. 
So I'm going to move the exposure down just a tad. So I've now got both ends of the scale lit and not blinking. And that, that will be the texture extremes of the white and the black. So theoretically, if I make a print at grade 3 and I use a grade 3 setting on the enlarger, for a fully calibrated system, this will produce a print with fluffy white clouds and a dark tree trunk where you can still see the bark. You can take In this example, I've taken three readings and you can see that there's a reading that's at the end of the scale here, which is a dark texture. There's a mid-gray texture and there's one that's blinking white, which means it's going to be blank white on the paper. And before I show you how you can work out a burn exposure, I'm just going to tell you that um, when we go up and down in, in time, at the moment it's going down in single steps. And these are in twelfth of a stop steps. You can make that a lot quicker and coarser by pressing the up and down buttons together, changing to a coarser step size, pressing cancel, and now it'll go up and down much quicker in now quarter of stop steps. So what I'm going to do is I normally use sixths, that's my halfway house, and I'm going to go up and down in sixths of a stop. So let's just say that these three readings on the scale are dark tree trunk, some light stone, and a fluffy white cloud. And I want them all to be look right at the same time. Now, you can always manipulate two points with grade and contrast to be correct, but with three points you need to do either dodging or burning. And in this case, we're going to do a standard exposure and then work out what additional exposure we need for the burn-in. Now, if I want this to be light stone and a dark tree trunk, I need to move these apart, so I need to increase the contrast. So I'm just going to go to grade 5 at the moment and reduce the time. And just move it back onto the scale. So now I've got grade 5, 31 seconds, I've got my tree trunk and my light stone. Well, perhaps the stone wasn't that light, so I'll reduce the to grade 4 and move it so it's just up there. So I've got slightly darker stone and tree trunk in shade. And my sky is off the white end. This, by the way, is not white. I need to explain the grease scale to you a little bit. This is not a scale going from white to black. It's actually going for, from a pale grey to a very dark grey. Both of these tones at the end you should be able to see texture in, and that's the key for the success of this unit. If this was a true black and white scale, on this um, range white would be out here and black would be out here because there are a lot of black tones and white tones um, for a lot of exposure range, and they're not very useful to us. So this is what Ansel Adams calls his textural range. So the trick here is now to turn the focusing button off the enlarger turns off and we do our print. So it'll do a print for 24 seconds. I'm not going to wait the 24 seconds, I'm going to just quickly abort it so I can move on to the interesting part. So I'm just going to uh, stop that continuing. But the unit has recognised it's tried to make an exposure of 24 seconds. And now what I need to do is make the clouds the right type of grey. So if I increase the exposure until that tone starts to come off the far end, so it's about here. That now is the right tone for the sky. So now what I can do is print 152 seconds, but I've already done 42. Well, you don't have to work out the difference. All you do is you press and hold the print button. It says the word diff for difference, and then we'll start actually printing the difference between the two exposures. Now, it puts this special symbol on the display to tell you it's doing a burn-in. And also, you'll notice there was a slight pause. And the reason for the slight pause is when you're burning in something, often it's selective, and in this case I'd be shading the land and just printing in the sky. And that delay of a couple of seconds allows you to pick up your dodging tools, put them under enlarger, be in position for the, the print to start. And that's the sort of thoughtful feature we put into this unit to make things nice and easy for you. So this will carry on for about 90 seconds. I'm not going to wait, but you see that was a very simple way of calculating um, a burn-in exposure for the sky. There's something else that the analyzer does which makes it very useful, 
and that is once you've taken a set of readings it can then tell you what particular exposure and contrast settings require to get the same appearance on different papers. Here I've taken two readings. There's one at a light grey and one at a dark grey for 33.1 seconds. And I can change the paper a setting and see what it will do to the actual exposure and the contrast. So if I press the paper button and then alter it to a different paper channel, the contrast has changed. It's moved from there to there. And the exposure time has stayed the same, keeping that point at the off-white. If I change the paper again, the actual exposure time has slightly changed and the contrast has changed. So with this particular analyzer, it has no control over the print contrast itself. It, it merely tells you what you're going to get. So if your paper reacts differently to the filters that you use in your enlarger, you will can see the effect on the analyzer and compensate for it. So you might want to increase your contrast a bit um, or decrease it. Um, or you might want to slightly alter exposure um, to get the same two points. But the nice thing is, is the analyzer will tell you what you get and when you change your paper assumption, it will tell you what the new print tone assumption will be that goes with it, and you can compensate for it. One feature of the analyzer I forgot to mention is the negative density mode. When you turn the enlarger on with the focus button, you can obviously take measurements on the baseboard, and if you take several measurements, it'll start giving negative density readings if you took the thinnest part of the negative first. But if you press and hold the measuring button, the word log comes on the display. And when you release it, it gives a, a light level. And that can be used in calibration. If I now take that to somewhere slightly darker and press and hold the button again, it'll take a reading. And the first reading will be density zero. If I make it darker still and take a second reading, it shows a density of 0.19. So on the baseboard, I can get approximate negative densities from subsequent readings. To come out of this mode, I press and hold the measuring button again until the word end comes up, and it comes back to the standard display, and then I can turn the enlarger light back off again.